A major foundation in physics that extends to all the sciences is the conservation of energy, which states, Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It may be transformed from one form to another, but the total amount of energy never changes. As an example, consider the energy states of a block of ice sliding down an inclined plane. We start by doing 100 joules of work to lift the block from the floor to the top of the incline. So at this location, where the block is at rest, its potential energy is 100 joules and kinetic energy is zero for this location. Since the potential energy at the top is 100 joules with respect to the bottom, can you see that potential energy at the bottom is then zero? And what does that tell you about the kinetic energy at the bottom? Can you see it must be 100 joules? What we see is the total energy is the same at each location. That is, the sum of potential energy plus kinetic energy equals 100 joules. So halfway down the plane, where the block is half its initial height, the potential energy must be 50 joules. And what does that tell you about the kinetic energy at this point? Can you see it must be 50 joules? And when the block is one quarter of the way down, its potential energy is 75 joules. And that means how much kinetic energy at this location? I hope you said 25 joules. Why? Because 75 joules plus 25 joules equals the total energy of 100 joules. If you were tutoring your friends on this, would they get it? If so, can they see that three quarters the way down its potential energy is 25 joules? which means the kinetic energy at this location must be 75 joules, true? Energy is conserved. Not kinetic energy and not potential energy, but the total energy of the system is conserved. 100 joules at every point. Yum! Consider the potential energies and kinetic energies of a big metal bead that slides due to gravity along an upright wire as shown. Suppose at point A, the bead is at rest with a potential energy of 50 joules. That's 50 joules with respect to lowest point B below. That means that at point B, its potential energy is zero. And suppose its potential energy at C is 25 joules. And let's suppose at point D, potential energy is 10 joules. Do you have enough information to write the correct kinetic energies at all these points? I hope so. We can begin at point A, where we know kinetic energy is zero because the bead is at rest there. Aha, we know what the total energy is going to be at each point, namely 50 joules. With this information, we can fill in all the values of kinetic energy. At point B, kinetic energy has got to be 50 joules, where potential energy is zero. Right? I hope you agree. And at point C, can you see where potential energy is 25 joules? Kinetic energy there is also 25 joules. And at point D, where potential energy is 10 joules, kinetic energy must be 40 joules? So we see that along the wire, the sum of the potential energies and kinetic energies is the same. Yum. Here's an interesting demonstration. Tracks A and B are made from identical pieces of channel iron, the kind you use to make a bookcase on the wall. They are bent differently, but have the same track lengths. A ball placed at their left ends has potential energy with respect to the level of the right ends of the tracks. When released, this potential energy transforms to kinetic energy. Let me leave you with three questions. When released, how will their kinetic energies compare as they reach the right ends of the tracks? How will their speeds compare at the end points? Now here's the interesting question. Which ball travels along the track in the shortest time? 
don't confuse speed with time. Until next time, good potential and kinetic energy. Yum.